Good evening, everyone, and I want to welcome you to the um, Monday, February 21st, 2022 Board of Commissioners meeting. At uh, 5 o'clock, we had a couple work sessions, one about the, uh, the North Beach residents, uh, and then at uh, 5.30, we uh, had a discussion on the future land use map plan review. Um, and uh, just a quick note, uh, Commissioner White stated last uh, meeting that he would not be here today, taking some well-deserved time off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order now. And the first uh, item is our invocation and pledge of allegiance. And I'll ask uh, if our vice chairman would lead us in that this evening. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this glorious evening, Lord. As springtime comes upon Currituck County, Father, we are grateful for uh, the weather and that which causes uh, our trees to bloom, our flowers to bloom, Father, and brings back the beauty to remind us that winter is merely fleeting. Father, I pray that you would uh, bless us, this Board of Commissioners, this evening. Lord, I pray that you would grant us wisdom as we consider the issues before us. Father, I also pray a blessing of uh, protection and safety over Bob, his wife, and son uh, while they're on vacation. Lord, may they return safely. Father, bless this evening. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice Chairman. The next item is the approval of the agenda. Do we have any changes to the agenda this evening? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, under the consent agenda, a budget amendment, which is item number 20220083 on page 19, to have that removed so we can have Chief Milton come in and discuss with us the overtime. It's for $815,000, and I'd like some clarification on this, so I'd like to have just that one item under the budget amendments removed. Okay. Any other uh, agendas? Yes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> under uh, administrative, um, I'd like to uh, have a discussion amongst the board uh, and consider a resolution. Um, you uh, mean under new business, you mean? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Um, specifically to address the uh, new restrictions that are being considered on striper fishing in our region, specifically Currituck County. Uh, but um, they, uh, it was decided this past year to uh, reduce the amount of fish that were allowed to be caught. And uh, it appears that we're headed for even greater restrictions. Um, and I would like to, our board to consider a resolution opposing that. Okay, so I guess we'll make that... Um Item A under new business, and then move the other ones down to B, C, and D, and E accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Um, sure. Any other uh, changes to the agenda? Okay. Here, none. Ask for a motion. Move for approve. Second. Okay. Any further discussions on it? All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. All opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. And next is our public comment. Um, this is a time for the citizens um, and the public to come before us and discuss any matter or any item they would like to talk to the board. Um, we give you three minutes and you'll see uh, a clock up there will turn green. When you see yellow, if you could uh, get about 30 seconds left, you could kind of wrap up your your thoughts um, and uh, you'll be on uninter uninterrupted time to speak in any matter you want. And I had a few that might have been here for the work session. I'll just go through them. Uh, Nick Ellis, we was with the horse tour. Um, Cindy Midkef. Uh, Lisa Hurley, Kathy Blanton, Larry Wiley. I think they were all here. For yeah, me. I'm just going to read them out there for uh, Tina uh, Wettengill. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Excuse me if I'm wrong on that one. And uh, the next item we have is Denise Fallon. If you could state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name's Denise Fallon. I live at 553 Winslow Road in Hartford, North Carolina. And that's really strange to say that. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me this evening. I um, appreciate the opportunity to come before this board and share some information with the public about the school where I'm the principal, J.P. Knapp Early College here in Currituck. 
And I did also sh share a handout with you. So it's recruitment time at J.P. Knapp, and I like to uh, come out and spread the good word about what's going on in my school. So uh, it's recruitment time, and recruitment at J.P. Knapp means that eighth graders can apply to attend uh, J.P. Knapp Early College. That's um, open to all eighth graders in Curry Tuck County, whether they attend a public school or home school or private or whatever. It's open to everybody. And so uh, not everybody knows that. But those applications, uh, students can complete those. They're online, so they can find them on our website. And those are open until March 4th. And so again, uh, JP Knapp's an opportunity for students to earn college credit while they're still attending high school. We operate under that umbrella of the College and Career Promise here in North Carolina. Uh, last year, 86% of our graduates graduated with uh, an associate degree, a credential, or a diploma from College of the Albemarle, and I think that's pretty impressive in the midst of a pandemic. And this year, we're on track for about 89% of our students to graduate with that. So we're really proud of the work that our students and our staff uh, do to work together to make that happen. One other thing I want to mention tonight is that students who uh, – can transfer into JP Knapp if they come from a similar program. So if they come from another early college or they come from s some sort of advanced placement sort of, um, sometimes private schools have different things, uh, we look at all of those on a case-by-case -case basis. So sometimes students do come to JP Knapp that are not ninth graders. And uh, again, we, we look to um, afford those opportunities to, to people here in Currituck County. Of course, it's just for our residents. Um, so it's a, I think it's a great opportunity for folks. Uh, we do have a target demographic. We're looking for those first-time college goers, uh, at-risk students, English as their second language, low socioeconomic status. But that's just our target demographic. That doesn't mean you have to fall into one of those categories to be a student at JP Knapp. So that's really all I had to say this evening. Again, I encourage the public, if they're watching tonight, to find out more about our school, check out our website, give me a call. I can answer any questions that you have. And uh, it's a great school, so I, I encourage folks to apply. I got a, Mr. Chairman, I got a couple questions for her, if she doesn't mind. First off, I'd like to say that um, the Ms. Fallon and Ms. Boyer, her assistant principal, I'll go to that school all the time. They run a tight ship. They do a really, really good job. That school is like a like a factory like the Ford plant used to be or whatever. I mean, it's y'all do a great job, so good job on that. And it, the results show. I do have a couple questions because I've, I've, I've been asked this. Now, if, if a child is a student at NAP, they now, can't they participate like in band for one example? Um, yes, our students can participate in band. Then actually this year our students started to travel to the high school to take that band class as well. Okay. So they take the class and they do after school. They can uh, participate in drama productions. How about FFA and stuff like that? They cannot, no. Okay. Yeah, Mike said he's happy about the band, but I didn't know, I didn't know if they could... Mm -hmm. We you had know. to work hard to get make that happen because they were always behind. They'd get there after school, and it was big drama, but we made that happen, so I was excited about that. But no to, the, like, the FFA or the stuff like that? That's, yeah, that's a no okay. to that. But our students do take some of those CTE courses, not those particularly, but they have those opportunities at the college level. And I know that COA has a new agribusiness program. Hmm. We haven't had anybody try it yet, but we're always looking for new opportunities for our students. So... Our students take a lot of art courses at the college level, um, welding, CAD, um, lots of different things, especially did, over at the Maple Campus. And you said, did you say they could get involved with drama as well? They can. They okay. can do any of those drama productions. And our students actually do those, and they get involved in the drama productions over at COA as well. Oh, wow. I just want to say that I know you must be very proud of your students and how not only do they go to COA, they take the leadership roles. I know I've mentioned before the um, Student Government Association over there. They present to us regularly at the Board of Trustees, and the overwhelming majority of those officers are from J.P. Knapp. Yes. And that is such a proud moment for me, and it's a proud moment, I'm sure, for you, Ms. Fallon, and I know it's a proud moment for Currituck County. So good job on the leadership, Thank you for too. That. We, we promote that leadership um, with all of our clubs. Of course, they're, all of our clubs are service organizations in some way, and uh, we, we really push them to be leaders and uh, to have a voice, if you will. And so um, I like to see it beyond, you know, it's great that we have a campus here in Maple, and that expansion has really been wonderful for us. 
um, and we encourage our students to get involved beyond that campus. And so um, it, 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 it is a proud moment for me as well. What's your, uh, your enrollment, the, the max enrollment is what, like low threes? 350. There? 350. Mm -hmm. What do you all have this year there? About 257. Two? Okay. Mm -hmm. Last year was sort of a low year for recruitment, and that's why I'm here tonight. Um, I wasn't sure with the pandemic and the way things were going if we didn't get the word out like we needed to. Um, right now, our <coughs> recruitment numbers are looking pretty good. We've got about 70 applicants right now, and so I think that's pretty good for half, about halfway through that recruitment time. But um, we always have to leave a little bit of room if you will, uh, so that students have the opportunity to stay a fifth year if they choose to do so. So if they're working to complete a program at the college level, I do approve for them to stay that extra year. So again, that's no cost to their family for them to complete that program at COA. I have to ask, why, why are they not allowed to participate mm -hmm. in FFA? Because that, that that course in particular is tied to an actual class at um, CCHS, so at Curry Tech High School, and uh, they have their own special number with the state of North Carolina, and we have ours, and so um, students that attend those classes have to be enrolled in that school. Uh, band is a little bit different uh, because it's a, a different type of course and program, if you will. Um, there, again, there's some, like our kids can't participate in athletics either because oh, that's ruled yeah, by that. the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, which, you know, they have got a lot of controls. Band's only been, what, a couple years too, right? This is the first year students have traveled oh, there. Oh, I thought it was two. Yep. They, they've participated after Mike's school. Happy. Uh, but it's always been a challenge, you know, for that to happen. Uh, and I just want a little side note here. Can I finish something um, real quick, Mike, before I forget yep, it? Yep, yeah, yes. And the other thing is, um, sometimes just with scheduling is sometimes a nightmare with some of those other courses. Band is at the end of the day, and we had students going anyway, so we were able to make that work. But sometimes it's just very difficult, especially when you get uh, students at that college level trying to take those college courses and make some of those other things work, too. Yeah, the reason so. I ask is I know a couple that said they would love to apply, but they could not join the FFA there, so. Well, I'm open to suggestions. You know me. I'm always looking for a way. So <laughs> yeah. if anybody's got an idea, let's talk. Tell them to start a chapter at COA. Mm -hmm. You know what? I've thought about that. Mm -hmm. So they need one. I tell you, the COA kids, the ones that you, and I know the, most of the kids, like you said, from coming by NAP or whatever, mm -hmm. but I will say this at our county buildings, at the public safety building, my office for mm -hmm. the sheriff's department's there, the, the kids, like, I mean, their behavior. I mean, like I said, I think maybe one or two times I've had this. Oh, you no, know, they, I've had to go visit. You run too. a tight ship. Mm -hmm. I've had to visit. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they, they get real comfortable because there's a lot of them over there. And but so, the, I would say 95% plus oh, their behavior is great. I appreciate you saying that. Some of those boys. But I think they know that Miss Fallon will get them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the one little side note I wanted to bring up is I noticed um, this year um, the uh, it's a good man Charlie Brown play this year, and I believe 40 years ago today, my senior year. I was in that play. You, you were, were in drama with us, I and was. the director is sitting in the audience. Yes, indeed. Mrs. Snowden she was is. one of the directors yes. for that play. You know, it was. And so, was a, I, I've got to tell you, Miss Miss Snowden, you'll appreciate this. When I saw that that play, that was going to be the play, I immediately broke out in song, singing um, a book report on Peter Rabbit. So, now we, uh, yeah. we could volunteer the chairman if y'all need somebody for the part. Yeah, I, I, would, I, I played, I played yeah, Schroeder, and I still remember all the lines. Yeah, I know. Schroeder, I, I was, was Schroeder in that play. Which yeah, I, I it did was the fun, same so thing. Absolutely. I plan on going again. Me it too. Was, Me it too. It was a fun I'm time. Excited. I just wanted to. You'll have to give gonna... us a one-man show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but no, I yeah, think. I think uh, <laughs> see if Mrs. Snowden will get up and reject us again. But anyways, no, Denise, thank you for everything. I mean, you. You've done a great job there, and I thank know you're you. uh, you've been in this county a long time, and and I know you care about those kids there. So I just thank sure you do. Yep. Any other questions for Ms. Fallon? Yes, do a great job. We thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you, and you, I appreciate Fallon. your time thank this evening. Here. Thank you. All right, the next I, uh, person signed up we have is Miss Barbara Snowden. I will admit, Mr. Chairman, you look a little bit different than when you did on stage. 
My name is Barbara Snowden, <laughs> and I live at 154 Courthouse Road. And before I get into what I'm here for, may I make another comment, Denise? I was looking at um, US, uh, the U.S. list of the top high schools in the nation. And when you find that J.P. Knapp Early College is listed as one of the very best, and there were only a few North Carolina schools listed, it was very proud. I was very proud to see that in print in a national magazine. All right, why I'm here tonight. I want to talk about a project that y'all have already approved, and that is the stabilization of the jail. Uh, stabilization, as we know, is the first step into the restoration of the jail. The reason I'm here tonight is I would like to invite each one of you. Uh, I know that your nights are very busy uh, but if you could make another night next Monday night at the library, the Curry Tech County Historical Society will be meeting. Our program will be on the jail. There will be a short presentation on the history of the jail going back to the 1700s uh, of the buildings that have, that have been on this particular property. Then we will have the engineer talking about what is actually being done in the stabilization of the jail. I'm sure you've all seen the, and heard the uh, noise coming out of the jail and seeing the equipment over there. And then finally, uh, we will have a discussion on what people might like to see that building being used as. And we realize it will be your decision as to how that building will be used but I think it's always good to have county input of people saying, you know, what would I like to see in that building or what possibly could be done with that building. And those, that will be done. It is not a formal public hearing, but the public is definitely invited. Anybody who would like to come and take part in the discussion, we'd be glad to have them. The meeting will be at the Curry Tech, the Bar Barco Library at seven o'clock and, um, uh, as always, our historical society meetings are open to the public, and we would love to see some of you here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Snowden. Okay, I have no one else signed up for the public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? If you do, if you could come forward, please state your name and address for the record. You, Paul, earlier. Okay, you are actually been added to the agenda. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so I'm sorry, I got here as quick as I could. Okay, okay, okay. gotcha then. Okay. Oh, okay. So, did a great gotcha. job. okay. All right, well, um, that being said, I had uh, no one others or anyone else out there who did not sign up. Uh, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment and move into the commissioner's report. And this evening, I'll start off to my right and start off with uh, Commissioner Owen Etheridge. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as all of us are aware, the world is at a perilous time right now. It looks like we could have the beginnings of a war in Europe, and I just ask people to ask Heavenly Father to let calmer heads prevail and this not happen. It seems like steps were taken this afternoon by Mr. Putin that will begin that process of starting the, an invasion. So let's just keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Etheridge. Uh, Commissioner McCord? Uh, just a couple things. I'd like to invite my fellow, uh, as well as the county manager um, and commissioners, uh, we have a retiree luncheon next Monday, the 28th. Write that on your schedule. Um, it's for actually for four of our uh, retirees. Uh, it's from 11:30 to 1:30 at the Public Safety Building. The last one we did there worked out really well. How we kind of did everything. Um, two, it's actually their last day of employment that day. Miss Linda Fairby from the office that's worked for the county for just a little over 20 years. She lives. Miss Linda is a huge asset, and she's going to be greatly missed. Um, I mean, if, if you got a question, she answers everything, and she'll do everything. She's awesome. Um, J.J. Uh, Jordan, which is going to be the end of an era on Knott's Island. One of our deputies is retiring. Um, that's his last day of employment as well. Um, it's going to be crazy because, like, when anything happened on Knott's Island, they called the guy or they went to his house. 
So um, he's the second one. The third one, um, Deputy Lisa Starcher, and she would let me say this. She was my former partner um, at work. Um, she was um, – she had some medical stuff, so she retired. So it's her as well. And then our last one, which you guys saw, um, Corporal Chapel, uh, who left with us, and we just retired as K-9, I believe, the last meeting. It's for those four. So it's from 1130 to 130. It's $10 for the food, for the, the, um, for the lunch. Um, if you want to come, send me a message, whatever, um, like I said. And that's it on that. So that's the 28th. Um, probably have 60 to 80 people there for that. Um, like I said, and it's a, it's a, like Commissioner Etheridge said, it's kind of a turning point where we're, you know, you hate to see, I mean, we've lost some really, really good people to retirement. I'm glad for them, but like envious of them in some ways, as well as like, I hate them because they left. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, like you said, you know, they've done a lot of service. Um, I, the people in Knott's Island are going to struggle with JJ leaving because every call, I mean, it's like, I know JJ or JJ's my neighbor. I mean, it's going to be really weird for them over there because he's not going to be there anymore. Um, that and just like I said, be cautious. I mean, the fires that we have in with the volunteer fire department, the, the ones on the mainland and in Kerala, they do a great job, uh, as well as our paid fire. I mean, we've had a lot of fires this year, and we've had some really bad total losses and stuff like that. Um, like I said, so please support those guys. Um, you know, they're out here and all your first responders, um, public safety, all that stuff. Um, you know, it's been a crazy, crazy winter with that. I know we've had so many fires, it's ridiculous. So, but, and like you said, you can contact the fire departments for the, uh, the batteries for the, uh, your smoke, smoke alarms. Like I said, we have a program for that. So like I said, maybe that would help prevent some of it. But like I said, it's, that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Vice Chairman Obama? Uh, nothing this evening, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, just real quick, I just wanted to touch base on the fire departments. Yeah, we had a pretty big fire this week um, in Lower Currituck, uh, pretty much, um, and we've been seeing a lot more lately. So please um, support them as much as you can. And one way you can support Lower Currituck is on uh, fr this Friday, the 25th, they're having a spaghetti dinner. It starts at 5 p.m. Um, you can go in and sit down or you can drive through. It's $8 a plate. It, uh, it is a fundraiser for the department there. You can come in and tour the facilities, look at the apparatus, ask questions, meet your firefighters. Um, I'll be there um, as well and um, showing everybody around. So it's a good time to get out, support your fire departments, get some, some spaghetti, and um, take a look to see what, um, what they're taking care of you with. And, um, and then... Uh, and again, just be safe out there. I mean, the tour season's getting ready to start here soon, and um, they're getting ready to uh, – they're, they're taking care of – they're scraping the roads in the south end of the county. Um, they're getting ready, and people have asked that they're not going to start putting the surface down until it gets warmer because they need warmer conditions for that stuff to adhere uh, properly. So they're going to scrape the roads, get them ready to go, so when we do start getting warmer weather, that's when you'll see them starting to put the surface down. So – you know, don't expect to see that right away. They're just getting the uh, getting it all set up. So um, that's all I had this evening. And Mr. Oh. Mr. Chairman, real quick. Okay. And and um, I've asked our county manager uh, on multiple occasions because they're not sweeping the roads, and I've had multiple complaints of debris in the roads, taking out windshields. So um, if anybody is encounters those conditions, please call. You may want to call NC DOT. Well, uh, we've DOT's we've, we've been calling uh, the DOT Maple uh, facility okay. and letting them know of our concerns and citizens' concerns. Um, I do know that the, the clerk has called a couple of times. Um, I saw myself after the first call; they had actual street sweepers out there cleaning they up the pebbles. And really they do. I ride up the road a lot. They had them out it. there today. They're sweeping them, but again, don't know but but I know, like last Friday on the way heading south, I was getting sprayed again. So, uh, and the other thing, they uh, only work if they're running. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. <laughs> but but we have we have I think gotten good response when okay. when we've received the information. So I mean, folks can can call I guess county offices. Leanne is always looking for right, her. and 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 we'll we'll get we'll get word to chance to answer the phone. <laughs> we'll get word to DOT and ask that they communicate with their contractor. They have been doing better. Yeah. All right. Uh, next is our commissioner, Mary Etheridge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Last Monday, I attended Curry Tuck County's Alcoholic Beverage Control Board meeting. And on behalf of the ABC board, I'd like to thank the staff at our local ABC stores for all their hard work. Throughout the state and in our county, there's a shortage of workers and sometimes even a lack of products. Curry Tuck County ABC board is aware of some of the issues facing our stores and we're working with legal counsel to compile a new county policy for the ABC stores plus a pay study. Again, we'd like to thank them for all their hard work. And then on Wednesday, I attended the Curry Tuck County Social Service Board meeting and at our meeting, DSS social worker Tiffany Sutton was issued the You Make a Difference Certificate of Appreciation. She was recognized for her dedication to helping foster children with high intensity behavioral problems and mental health issues and for advocating for their treatment. Ms. Sutton has worked for the Curry Tuck DSS since 2014. She handles foster care, foster home licensing, adoption. She teaches the foster home licensing course, and she also serves as an on-call after-hour supervisor. Again, thank you, Ms. Hudson, for all you do for the children of Curry Tuck County and for really making a difference here in our county. She, Thank you. She does an awesome job. She does. Thank you, Commissioner and, and commis Commissioner Jarvis. I don't have much tonight. Just to say that uh, there's nothing that makes you appreciate where you live and the people around you like traveling abroad. And uh, if you don't feel blessed where you are, all you have to do is just to look at so many other people in need and so many people who leave their families to try to work and make it back to them. So I just want to say it's good to be home, uh, and it certainly made me appreciate where I'm from. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jarvis. Next, we have our county manager slash county attorney report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the board has been very patient. I'm happy to report that I think the Paradise Homes cleanup is about to come to a resolution. Um, as you know, the county uh, had to ultimately go to court, receive a court judgment that authorized the county to go upon the property, upon the property owner's failure to do so and to clean the property of the dilapidated manufactured homes. As required by statute, the county must um, sell all salvageable material uh, and any proceeds that are raised from the sale of those salvageable materials uh, after the county deducts its cost must be returned to the owner of the property. Um, due to the good efforts of our able assistant, Rebecca Gay, um, who has kind of headed up and spearheaded get moving this along, uh, we placed all these manufactured homes uh, on gov deals. Uh, surprisingly to me, received bids on eight of them, totaling $68,000. Wow. So uh, the only one we did not receive a bid on <clears throat> is already collapsing on the ground. <laughs> uh, so we will be within 30 days wrapping up the, um, the final sales agreement and the individuals will have that amount of time to get the units off of the property. Uh, so we are, we are heading to resolution of that particular eyesore on the corridor. Question regarding that last one that when everything's moved off, um, would that be possible to offer like a burn training, maybe let them burn it down, or, or is that even doable with I that I think one? that one is completely, is it not completely? Uh, I think it's already down. Is it? It's mostly down. It's mostly down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can we sell the, tree, the trees out of some of, <laughs> some of the growth? Cluttered crawling drills. Yeah, well, I don't know if you want to look at So, so that, that, that is coming to a conclusion uh, at long last, and be glad to see that, that area finally cleaned. Good. Um, the week before last, um, airport manager and county staff and me met with our consulting engineers for the airport, Talbert and Bright. Uh, the, the new airport layout plan is underway. Um, it's a 20-year plan and I guess up to 40 years ultimately. Uh, so we looked at five or six different iterations or, or, or proposals for the plan. Um, and then last week, uh, a team of staff members met again to kind of go over what we think would be the most, the best to recommend for Talbot and Bright to put into a study. 
uh, put into the plan and submit to the Division of Aviation for their review and okay. Of course, it will come back to this board for your ultimate review and decision. But it looks like there's some very exciting uh, opportunities uh, in that plan for the county and its airport going forward. I have to again see the accolades of our airport manager, William Nelson. He's doing a fantastic job, continues to, to, to make records in the amount of fuel that we're selling, the amount of air traffic coming in and out, particularly the type of jet aircraft that's coming in and out of there, and the amount of interest that's being expressed by uh, owners of aircraft that they certainly would like to find a way to to base their, their aircraft here at Curry Tuck County if, if we can eventually get the facilities there. Is, the, is there a hangar under construction right now? There, we finished one hangar, a private individual the board right. approved the lease for. Um, <laughs> that one is complete, I believe, and his, his aircraft are now housed here. Yes. Uh, ba basically, and that's a you know, nice uh, tax value on those aircraft, or the aircraft he has here. I think he has another one he wants to bring in. We also were in discussion with a, a second individual to do a similar project, um, but he is for some reason holding back at this point and not, not moving forward. Um, but that's also part of this airport layout plan, and then we need to start figuring out and be careful about how we're placing things and utilizing our our airport and adjacent properties uh, so we don't box the airport in and prevent some, some good growth in the future. It's growing. Yes, it is. Um, next, uh, you remember in 2019 when you met for two days over at Cooperative Extension and we went through area by area of the county and determining what might be some goals to meet? <coughs> Um, and I, uh, about a month or so ago, I had a meeting with Cameron Lowe and one of her staff members to talk about the concept of a high tunnel and incubator uh, idea for growing and teaching persons how to grow high-end, high-valued vegetables uh, in a small place or location, particularly getting into the uh, restaurant or food industry as a, as a place to market these That was the, the table, the garden to table or farm to right. table. Yep. And so that, so one of, one of your goals was that and also to provide for incubator or other training kind of uh, facilities for agribusiness in the county. Um, so what, what, there's now a grant opportunity for Cooperative Extension to be able to get a high tunnel, which to me, a lay person is a greenhouse, um, <laughs> in, in which they will focus on uh, growing these kind of vegetables and teaching people how to do the same thing on their property uh, with these high tunnels or greenhouses and growing these same kind of vegetables and marketing them. Uh, and so we've identified a location. They need water and electricity to the, to the high tunnel. And so the only place we've been able to really find is kind of adjacent to the back parking lot, a cooperative extension, trying to make it not so visible as you come in, again, the entry to the Commerce Park, one of the entryways. But I, 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 will, I hope to have done it tonight, but I'll send to you an aerial photo, kind of the idea of location. Um, I've indicated my concern about how it might look. Um, they, they are committed to having the master gardeners do some landscaping kind of work. To is this behind where they're kind of doing some growing right now? No, it's act that, that area is pretty much filled. Filled. Um, Kevin uh, Lowe and I walked around the properties last week trying to find a site. This is actually as, as you come in right across from the animal shelter, make that left to that back parking lot, and there's kind of a flat area right as you enter into the parking lot uh, there behind Cooperative Extension. But that, that's about the best place we were able to identify that has electricity, uh, water, and was right there at the Cooperative Extension how big facility. It was, how big of a... It's uh, about 30 feet by 50 feet. Oh. Pretty decent size, but I'll send that to you and, and hope that that, that right. site is satisfactory, so we can move forward on that project. Uh, and then, lastly, I want to also um, make a comment about our our fantastic IT director Logan Steese. He continues to to do wonderful things and to make a name for for this county and for himself. I was uh, attending the virtual county attorney conference several weeks ago, and one of our um, uh, seminars had to do with cybersecurity. Um, and Shannon Tufts, who is the cybersecurity or the IT expert at the School of Government, um, that was making comment about, well, they have strike teams around the state of IT professionals who are able to come in when uh, there's an attack on a unit of local government's um, computer system, ransomware, those types of things we've heard about. Pasco Tank County had that incident a few years ago. Um, and so these strike teams are able to go in and help a, a local government save its 
uh, as data or try to recover and retrieve it. Um, and so I went down the stairs to see uh, see Logan. I said, Logan, you, know, you you ought to get involved in that. You know, you you probably really really be good for that. He said, Well, he said, you know, I, I went to the the seminar at the School of Government for certification courses about a year ago, and I told him I was interested, and they they <coughs> told me to sign up, and I did, but I never heard anything from them. So he said, I'll, I'll get back up with them. Well, he, he texted them. They they came back and said, well, you're on the team. You're, we're, we're broken up in, <laughs> Congratulations. We're, well, we're broken up into sections of the state. Um, and so you're on the Northeast <laughs> Regional team, but there's been no attacks out here since he was on it, so there's been nothing for you to do. Well, the next the next Monday I came in to work, and Logan's up in the, in the uh, kitchen as he usually is first thing in the morning. He said, well, he said, I, I said, well, how was your weekend? He said, well, I'm pretty tired. I spent all weekend long uh, on a strike team, on the strike team with an <laughs> issue in Yadkin County. It had an issue. And, and he said, I'm thinking maybe it was a test because uh, one of the members of the statewide strike team was so impressed with my work that I am now on the statewide strike team. Wow. That is wow. great. Logan, I, I will say this, and I talked to Logan today for about five minutes. Logan is, and like you're talking about William, too, we have – I mean, I've said it. Good staff. We sure. got good staff, That's awesome. and we're fortunate. And we do. And, like I said, we need to make sure we look out for them. Our systems are in the hands of <coughs> you know, Logan Steese. Uh, we can feel very, very comfortable. Yes. I think uh, he's, he's done news. some good things. Great news. That's all, right. all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The uh, our next item of business is new business, and the first item A is going to be in regards to. Um, striper um, season and a resolution and I will um, I, I guess we have a gentleman if you could come forward please we're gonna let you it's his fault. <coughs> we got the email. that's right yeah the email today but um, if you could just state your name real, uh, and address just for the record but then just kind of give us an update what's going on and and how this board can can help and and uh, just so the public kind of knows what's going on as well perfect I'm not 100% prepared, but I really appreciate y'all letting me come. My name is Reese Stecker. Thank you for Stecker. last notice coming up here, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, <coughs> yeah, my name is Reese Stecker. I guess technically I could claim Currituck County. I, I do own a couple lots up in Corovo on Swan Island Road, and we love camping up there. Uh, but I live in Kill Devil Hills right now. Um, but thanks again for the short notice. Uh, back in February of last year. I run a charter boat. I run a center console charter boat. I've got a boat slip at Oregon Inlet, but I also have another boat on the trailer <coughs> that I bounce around. I fish up at Currituck at the Currituck Bridge a lot in the spring and fall over at Mans Harbor. Um, but I'm not sure, not everybody's familiar with, with the Marine Fisheries Commission. The Marine Fisheries Commission is made up of nine, nine people. Uh, two scientists, two recreational sector and, uh, representatives, two commercial sector representatives, two at-large representatives, and the chairman who breaks a tie. But there is a new biologist by the name of Pete Cornegy back in, f it was February, March was when they had, it was a Zoom meeting, uh, but it was on the table uh, according to Dr. Cornegy, the striper population is collapsing in North Carolina. It was on the table at a 10-year moratorium, which threw us all for a loop because, you know, we, we did have it great back in the late 90s, early 2000s. I don't know how many of y'all fish or saw it. I mean, it used to be birds everywhere, fish everywhere, and then it kind of tanked out. But I would call what we've had for the last five, six years really good fishing. So it was, a, it was a surprise to all of us when this moratorium came uh, in the pipeline. We got lucky, was defeated because from what we understand, he didn't go through normal procedure, but it got the ball rolling for, for what's going on right now. Um, pass these out. One of these for each. Thank you. It may or may not make sense, but I'll try to make sense. We're used to seeing people's fun. Thank you. That's all right. I'll borrow them. Sorry. Anyhow, uh, I mean, I respect the heck out of Dr. Cornegie and 
the head striper biologist, his name is Charlton Godwin, which a lot of this information I'm going to go over came from him. But I don't agree with them. Uh, I've, I've run this boat and fished these waters for stripers since full time since 1997. As mentioned, we've had what I would call really good fishing to where the weather determines a lot of stuff with fishing. We've been catching these fish, especially in the fall. It doesn't matter what the wind's doing, which direction, how it's blowing. We've been catching them. So we're kind of miffed by this. Um, I don't agree with it, but if it is deemed by the Marine Fisheries Commission that there is a problem, there's a simple solution to the problem. The solution starts with the elimination of the quota going to the Roanoke Rapids management area. Are you all familiar with that? Well, let me back up. The striped bass quota is split right down the middle in two. The netters get half the quota. The recreational guys get the other half. The rec recreational half is split right down the middle between the Albemarle Sound management area and the Roanoke Rapids management area, which I'm going to show you all that real quick <coughs> so this makes more sense. Well, I didn't get here earlier because I was trying to find a map. I did the best I could do. But uh, this giant body of water right here is the Albemarle Sound. Currituck County, Dare County, all up and down. I'm going to show you while I'm walking by. This little sliver right here is the Roanoke Rapids. This little sliver on the bottom. <coughs> This giant body of water is, is the Albemarle Sound region, the little sliver here at the bottom, and it goes on a little bit further uh, if we had a map that showed the whole thing. But that little sliver on the bottom is the Roanoke Rapids. It's, I'm going to give you the exact numbers here in a minute, but the Albemarle Sound covers 664 uh, Roanoke Rapids would be this little line. It's like comparing a basketball to a pencil line. It is Renwick Rapids is 667,674 acres with a six month season that is not during the spawn or on the spawning grounds. The Roanoke Rapids, it gets Almore Sound region gets half the quota. That's Dare County, Curta County, uh, Queen County, Pasquotank County, uh, all of them, Terrell County, Roanoke Rapids, it supports the city of Roanoke Rapids. 667,674 acres with a six month season. Roanoke Rapids is 6,420 acres. Normally they have a three week season. They cut our quota last year, they went down to a one week season. But their season is during the spawn and on the spawning grounds. Uh, and the Roanoke Rapids is the only place in the United States of America that there is a season allowed during the spawn, on the spawning grounds, while the fish are there. No other place in the country allows it. Uh, so we're splitting a quota right down the middle with them. They get, we, we used to get, if you look at page the first page with the graph on, the quota used to be 275,000 pounds. The netters got 137,500. We got 68,750. Roanoke Rapids got 68,750. We just got cut by 81.5% or whatever it is, down to 12,804 pounds. And 12,804 pounds go to Roanoke Rapids. I'm, um, this has nothing to do with the, the commercial side. The problem we have is with the allocation on the recreational side. So, 667,000 acres versus 6420. The Albemarle Sound is 104 times larger than the Roanoke Rapids management area. Uh, it was, the, the quota was cut by 81.376%. This past year, the Albemarle Sound region that supports Dare and Currituck County and where everybody that y'all know and I know fish, we came in 4,546 pounds under quota in 2021. Roanoke Rapids, who
whose season got cut to one week, who's fishing during the spawn on the spawning grounds, caught 14,742 pounds over quota. There's a meeting on thir Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There's a striped bass FMP meeting in, it's at New Bern. It's, it's the MFC. That's why we're here. It's the first time we've had a chance in 23 years to change this quota and make it equitable. It is the farthest from being equitable, equitable with the way it's set up based on water mass. Well, if you know oh, we can't do it based on, okay, when well, it's six months versus one week, one to three weeks. It's no matter how you look at it, it it's not even close to equitable. And I've heard the story from them before. Well, we, it'll put Roanoke Rapids out of the city of Roanoke Rapids. Well, are these people at Marine Fisheries for the resource or are they for the economy? They're supposed to be for the resource. But if they're, if they're for the economy, well, Roanoke Rapids has got a one to three week season. What about Dare County, Currituck County, all the tourists? That, I mean, I take people from Corral on my boat all the time. If, if you're going to talk about economy, there's several more, you know, we've got a lot more counties fishing the Albemarle Sound region. We got six months out of the year economy instead of one to three weeks. So. Tell me what the impact was when they reduced the quota for the. It hurt our business. From two, from yeah. Two fish to one. Well, so, we, we didn't get any phone calls. <clears throat> and, you know, I've got people to come down that, that, I mean, they stay in Dare County too, but I got tons of customers that stay up in Corolla. And that could be the difference between two trips or one trip. Or, you know, two years ago, we went every day. This past year, when it got cut down to one, I got a lot less phone. Well, can we keep one? Well, we'll call you back. Now, if there's a problem, which I don't see, none of us see the guys fishing, but if there is a problem and you've got to cut something out, you start where, where they're keeping them on the spawning grounds. And you start where they're keeping them on the spawning grounds and they're catching twice the quota than what they're supposed to. 14,742 pounds over quota. We were 45, 46 under quota. Um, I mean, we're just, we've been getting a short end of this deal for 23 years. We finally got a chance to do it. We need help. There, the Roanoke Rapids is backed by the CCA. Do you all know who they are? It sounds like you do. There's a lot of money, deep pockets. They're very smart. Most of them are from Raleigh. The different CCA. Yes, I was going to say it can't be the <laughs> The function is the same. Well, they, the, the, Marine, the, the, the Marine Fisheries Commission is appointed by the governor. The CCA has gotten very shrewd, and they've donated enough money to the last couple of governors. Where they, it's like they bought the commission. That's where right. we've got recreational sector representatives that are supposed to be representing us charter boats, and when we come to them at the meetings, this is what you want. They vote against us. The ones that always vote with us are the commercial guys. But we need help. We need, I mean, it helps, it helps Currituck County. It helps Dare County. We need to be able to fish. And this quota has gotten, we, we've lost 80, over 80% 80 of our quota, and they're getting half of it, and, then, and they're going over. And then the big one is what they call dead discards, okay? And I know a lot of these guys that fish over there on the Roanoke Rapids. There's a lot of catch and release fishing that goes on there, and they do have a keeper season. But they're always talking about the triple-digit days when you catch 100 fish. When you catch 100 fish, according to the biologists, in January, February, the water's colder, there's 6% mortality. In May, when the fish are really in there spawning hard, there's 10% mortality. They call them dead discards. Uh, in 2018, Roanoke Rapids had 11,982 dead discards. In 2019, they had 11,980 discards. They didn't have data for 2020 because of total. But both of those years, Albemarle Sound region, this big giant area compared to this little pencil line, we had 8,258 harvested pounds. They had more dead discards by over a thousand than we had in a one week se in a two in a three week season. It's just the allocation. The allocation is the problem. You know, if if they're not going to get rid of it, I don't want to put them out of business. I mean, I, I don't think it's right. You know, I, I love eating the fish. A lot of fish get killed eating on my boat, 
But if there is a problem, as bad as they say there is, that's the first place you start. If you're not going to start there, either way, we've got a, the first chance in 23 years to get this quota geared towards where everybody's fishing. Okay, so, so I'm going to help, right? Um, we need to know this board is unanimous, I think, in, in supporting um, something, right? But we need to know what that looks like. What are we asking for? What do we need to ask for? What, what language are we, are we writing? Have well, you gotten any feedback from any of the other counties affected? That well, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to talk at Dare County tomorrow night, um, and this is all, there's been a lot going on. It, it's, it's not a done deal this week. This is the first step of the, uh, the FMP, the Fishery Management Plan. But I think there's a couple... to enter a joint resolution with Dare County as well. We would love that. I mean, uh, real quick, Psst. since, since uh, 1997, and you can look at it at, on your last, the last graph on here, our table, since 1997... They've had 182,481 dead discards. We had 53,880. I mean, it's to, to, to allow that season to go on if there's the problem they say there is, and for us to get penalized when we're coming in under every year, and, we, and if, you look at that, if you look at this third page, this dead discard thing, they're double us. They're double us every year, a three-week season. It was one week last year, a pencil line versus this giant body of water. What? So maybe I, when when you get when you meet with Deer County tomorrow, maybe you can find a point of contact from them, have them reach out and get yeah. with Paul, Boom out here, and get well, them two together yeah. and, and work on a. I mean, it, it's going to be it's going to be a hard task because they have these people on the Marine Fisheries yeah, Commission. But, uh, but Body Hannig and Bob Steinberg have been huge. I, they, they got emails today too. I don't know if they sent them in, but hopefully they did. I mean, I, I, I sent them the same email I sent y'all. I got to call in to Bobby. We now, thought so. it wasn't going to be due until Wednesday or Thursday, but I mean, at the very least, well, it's we're fishing 104 times bigger body of water, and the other stat is, what is it? If you're going by the season. We're down. We're 83.344 percent less days. I mean, it's it's got to be. You got to divide it on water area, or you got to divide it on they're fishing one to three weeks. We've got six months. I mean, we're we're 88 percent bigger than them if you're going by fishing days, and we're 104 percent bigger than them if you're going by water mass. And the facts don't lie. The, the dead discards, us coming in under quota, them doubling quota, I mean, it, it's a no-brainer, but it's, it's, it's a difficult task. And we got it. You guys sending well, a resolution. We can, do, we can or, get this resolution. We can make contacts to our representatives as well, uh, you know, for Curtuck supporting. And, we, and we're going <laughs> to try to get Perquimans and pass with Tank. I mean, they do a lot of it over on the other side of the sound, but, we're, but yeah, it, we're all getting a short end of the deal, and, and sure. we have been for 23 years. What happens to them when they go over quota? Nothing? They're, that's Stop what we said. So, they, so it, you're going you're gonna to penalize them and, and, and hold them back, 14,742 pounds? Nope. They're, gonna, they're still going to give them a season this year. They're going to give them a two-day season. But in two days, when all those fish are concentrated there, they'll, they'll probably catch as much as we do. Well, if the Albemarle Sound is under quota, and they're over quota by yep. so much. 14,742 pounds. That makes sense. You're fighting something besides just quotas. Right. No, oh, we're fighting well, the they're, CCA. They are killing fighting. more fish than we're catching. Yeah. That's, that's, and, a, problem. And not just, that's not a problem. Just, they're not just harvest killing more. No, they're dead killing. Discards. Right. Their dead discard numbers are more than our total catch and, for the year. And what even crazy. makes that worse is it's the spawning ground, so... They're killing the fish that increase the number of fish. That's killing just the fish that are going to spawn and they can't. Now. It, well, yeah, we does. will. Um, I th yeah, we'll get behind this and we'll get a nice resolution drafted up. And then, um, and like I said, Paul's got some phone calls in. I talked to Jim Tobin today. He might be the contact. Okay. You know, he's 
I don't know if he runs Pirates Cove. I think he does, or he's got a lot to do with it there. So he might be the point of contact there. I don't even know who to talk to at Pasco Tank and Clemens, but they're next on the list. Well, we are going to do something. Um, the county here supporting our you know, fishermen and the recreational piece of this. Um, well, we any, any help we can get, I mean, a, any help at all we can get, and I'll try to keep you all posted on what the next step is. I, I, I think, though, we have to get it on the agenda. So, y'all, we, we, we need to get on the agenda that reallocating the quota is something to be debated. So, from what I understand, I don't understand all this stuff. I'm learning as I go. I, and, and I'm just going to say this because I've talked to several commercial fishers. I don't know how any of these guys are even able to go out into the water and, and fish because even the net guys, the regulations can change in the middle of the night. They don't even know when they leave the, the – uh, The flounder season and all that. You're right. yeah, I'm yeah. telling you. I, I But they bought the commission. I mean, when you they look at – with campaign donations to the governors, it's – like I said, we've got recreational sector representatives – we beg them to vote one way, and they vote the opposite. The, the, the commercial guys always vote the way they vote. So well, they're the ones we can count on, and the ones <coughs> that we're supposed to count on vote against us every time. The recreational fishermen spend a lot of money. Uh, and there's a lot of people There's a up lot of money that spent. county up, up on that beach. On it. They charter us, and, and, and they take care of us, and they help us make a living. And, and March, April, when the water's cold, November, December, when the water's cold. I mean, we still catch some drum, but the stripers, if you want to make a living running the charters, that's what we got. That's and anyhow. Senator Steinberg is on the Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Commission. Yeah, he got an email today. So good. Well, Mr. Decker, well, we appreciate you taking the time. I know it's short notice for coming up here and enlightening us so we can. You did a far better job than I would have done. Well, glad you made it today. I'm getting ready to leave my glasses and all my paperwork. Um, and then, like I said, we'll, Paul will take a point on this and, yes. and get something. We we'll get something drafted by this board then with their county. Okay. I, I, I sent you a text this evening, so you. Well, you guys have my email anyway. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you Thank so you. much, Thank you, Mr. We, we take care. Really Be safe traveling. Thank you. Okay, kid. Um, uh, let's take a quick two-minute. A recess or, or three minutes, yeah, just as quick as we can, okay. and then get back and we'll keep it flowing. I just go. Okay, we're gonna uh, get this uh, back in session, and we're gonna go to item B, which is Commissioner Mary Etheridge travel request to visit NC 365 conference, March 20 through the 22nd. Uh, 2022 and the Durham Convention Center. Um, and I believe Com um, Commissioner Ethers would be the only commissioner traveling in at this, I mean, going to this event. Is that correct? As far as I know, yes. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'll make a motion for approval for the travel request. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion on it? All in favor? Um. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item B. Resolution authorizing sole source purchase of the Hersey water meters, Hersey water meters for Southern Nevada Bank's water system. They're the same ones. What's so that? We, they're the same ones that we have there, so this is just, we're. Yes, it, it authorizes an exception under the general statutes for purchasing to utilize sole source purchasing with the company that provides this very meter and antenna system that is required. Move for approval. Second. Motion a second. From um, Commissioner Owen Etheridge. Any further discussion? Oh, well. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Um, item D uh, board appointments to Fire and EMS Advisory Board. I'm not sure who had that appointment. So that was uh, Ryland's replacement. Oh, that's with right. Okay. Steve. That's right. And I move for <laughs> approval. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? What's that? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, the next item is the consent agenda. Move for approval. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? At this time, I'll um, ask for a motion to um, so close our regular meeting. Go ahead. 
Aye. Moved. So moved. I have a second. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, and at this time I'll move into closed session. Yeah. You need to recess it. Yeah. I can. I can. Yeah. You can recess. Re recess and then well, okay, okay. And entertain a motion to go into closed session. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. What did I say? Close? Yeah. I'm sorry. I was going too fast. Reset. Well, let me rephrase that to recess <clears throat> a regular meeting and go into a closed session. Aye. All right. So moved. So, Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> now move goes to closed session pursuant to GS 143-318.11A5 to establish or instruct county staff concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the county in negotiating the material terms of a contract for the acquisition of real property by purchase or exchange located at 2878 Kiritok Highway, Kiritok, North Carolina, and owned by Kingfisher Cove, Inc., to be used for any public purpose. And with that, we'll give a few minutes for it. Uh, yeah, everybody to...